My name's Joe Hay. I'm a freshwater ecologist at Cawthron Institute. So there are at least a couple of reasons why it's important to maintain some flow in a river during periods of low flow, and those are connectivity between the stream and the sea and maintenance of habitat. And we can illustrate both of those by thinking about Enunga, which is one of the whitebait species and contributes the most to the whitebait catch around New Zealand. So habitat, they need habitat to live in during their, at the phase of their life when they're living in fresh water. The adults live in the lower reaches of the rivers and they spawn there over the summertime and into the autumn. And they need connectivity to the sea so that their newly hatched larvae can move out into the sea where they live over the winter time and then move back in in the springtime as whitebait and contribute to the whitebait catch. Hi, I'm Emma and I'm a hydrologist for Nelson City Council. What we do is we gauge the river and over time as we collect up data points we can get an idea of what can be expected at the extremes of the river, so what's the highest flow we might get when it causes floods and what's the lowest flow that we might expect. So we can work out how important a flow is through a range of different statistics. And one of the key ones we often use is called a mean annual low flow. So when we get down to the mean annual low flows, that often triggers a process when we need to start thinking about water restrictions so that we have enough water left in the stream for the people who need to use it, but also for the in-stream life that need water as well. My name is Paul Gillespie. I'm a coastal science scientist also from uh, Cawthorn Institute. Tasman Bay is dotted with a number of estuaries, and all of these estuaries, there's freshwater inflow, and the freshwater inflow results in a reduction in salinity. Plants and animals that are living in the salt marsh or in the estuary often have specific salinity requirements. Some cannot be sustained or survive, grow in situations that are high salinity, similar to oceanic waters. They need to be diluted into a brackish situation in order to carry on their productivity. This affects feeding environment for wading birds. It also affects seagrass beds, which are fed upon directly by coastal organisms. One probably pretty important species that people can identify is cockles. You don't find cockles in areas that aren't affected to some extent by uh, freshwater influences. Now the second major effect on the coastal environment is through nutrients and the delivery of nutrients from the land to the sea. This has an effect on the productivity of coastal plants and the animals that feed on the plants. If you really think about it, what that means is the reduction in freshwater flow can have an impact on biodiversity of the coastal environment and also the productivity of the coastal environment. And this has follow-on effects to things that we all appreciate. <music>